Welcome to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. I'm Dr. Edmund Sulkowski, and I'm here with my little buddy Tucker <laughs> and my friend Dr. Gary Fiber. Pleasure. Gary, welcome. Hey, you know, Gary and I meet every once in a while for coffee, and we have these in-depth conversations about health, and, and he has his hand on the pulse of, of wellness. G Dr. Gary, I'm just going to call you Gary. Oh, it's fine. And, and he's, we're going to talk about the redox system today. It's, it's how our body really functions. It may, maybe it's how we actually age when that system is in a, a, a disabled format, yes, let's call it. Yes, less than ideal state. Yeah, so, so let's give a little background on Dr. Gary. Dr. Gary is a chiropractor. Correct. And you hail from Minnesota. Minnesota, nobody talks like that but him. But that's yeah. okay. <laughs> And you've been, you've been here for how long? In the, in Moved Western here in, in 2006. And you were in private practice, in chiropractic care. 30 years, was also an acupuncturist. I did a lot of functional clinical nutrition. And then you kind of retired from that and moved on into consulting and education. Exactly. I also, uh, we spent a lot of time working in multidisciplinary clinics, medical doctors, chiropractors, PTs combined. Um, I did that for a number of years. Spent 2014 teaching in China. We actually taught in the hospitals over there in the medical schools on how to teach actually non-surgical, especially spinal musculoskeletal things. And that was an exciting um, challenge. Uh, everybody over there, by the way, has to speak English if they're going to college. So it was easy to, but I had an interpreter. And then came back here in 2015, and I've really worked in a couple of different areas. One, it's always been wellness and healthcare because I, I still lecture around the country. Uh, my practice really in a coaching advisory capacity for a number of facilities around the country. And just my whole purpose is how to get people information so they can maximize their own body healing the way it, it should. And that's actually what we're supposed to be doing. Right. <laughs> we're supposed to be supporting our bodies so that it functions properly and regenerates and build that immune system. And that's what redox is. Redox is basically a chemical reaction. You know, it, it, it's a process where there's a transfer of ions. And that process has to happen properly in our bodies, otherwise we start a disease state. Absolutely, and people don't realize that. You know, I, I want to mention to everybody, Dr. Gary, that you, you're Peter's Township resident. Yes. And in fact, uh, you live in the same development that I lived in for 17 right. years, but I think you moved in it when I moved out. Probably. So when I, I waited till you left. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. A lot of people were glad I left. No, I don't know. But I left for Arizona for a number of years. And, uh, but it was kind of funny when I met Gary and we were just talking and we found out that we, were, we had lived in the same area. Right. But anyway, so what, what is this redox process that goes on, our, on in our body, okay. Gary? Redox, basically, they're, they're molecules. They're four atoms. Redox molecules are hydrogen, oxygen, salt, and chlorine and they sit in a saline solution, but they're actually produced in each particular cell. And for those of everybody who remembers anything about their science class, they're produced in the mitochondria, which are really the energy drivers of the cell. And they, they literally, as we age, decrease. And therein lies the problem. So is that attributed to our lifestyle in any way? Absolutely, in fact, uh, lifestyle is one of the most important things. I mean, now you're looking at 80,000 toxic chemicals in the environment we breathe every day. You're looking at all the stuff in the foods that we get that we don't know that we get. Stress can affect that. And just the aging process, for example, skin, even though skin turns over, the whole body turns over every seven years, but in a young person, in their teens and early 20s, skin cells regenerate every 28 days. By the time you get to my age, and we'll say I'm approaching 70, it takes 90 to 110 days for those cells to turn over, which is what starts the degenerative process in the body. Well, that's what we don't realize is we are a whole new person every seven, right. depending on the person, seven to maybe even 14 years for some people, you are actually a completely new individual. And if you're not supporting your body, it can go to the negative side of things or not so good side of things, or if your body's being fed properly and these cells are regenerating, it goes to the positive side. Now you mentioned those four components and, and you mentioned saline. We are nothing but a salt, a saline solution. Yes. And if you think about it, what's the first thing you do when you receive when, you go, when you're in difficulty and you're in a hospital, they put you on a saline drip? Absolutely. Because they know that that's what makes us function. Right. 
And you know, we hear a lot of things about, hey, you gotta restrict your salt, and, and maybe if you have a high blood pressure problem and you're trying to suppress that with medication and so forth, you have to watch that salt. But if you really look at the basis and the reason you're having high blood pressure, then you, you don't have to worry about it. That's absolutely correct. And this is kind of what Redox does. It's looking at the base, at the root cause of the problems, and hoping to eliminate all of this. Right. And you mentioned turnover at cells. We know that, for example, our intestinal tract, every three to four days, is a completely new intestinal tract. And so there are a lot of people out there with intestinal problems that really literally can reverse those if they apply these concepts with a lot of other nutritional concepts and stop what I call the insults. And, right. you know, we talk about this all the time. Right. We constantly are insulting our body with things our bodies cannot handle, and then we have a disease process that, that occurs. So this is really a lifestyle of support for our bodies. Exactly, and the problem is as the body renews itself, as the cells degenerate, one of two things is gonna happen. The body either gets the signal that, hey, this cell is defective, and it's gonna correct it, or it's smart enough to know that we're gonna kill this cell and generate a new one. But what happens is as we age, the DNA starts to deteriorate. So the, the telomeres, the end caps of the DNA start to break down. So now you're not duplicating a perfectly good cell. You are duplicating in a lot of cases an altered cell due to altered DNA, and therein lies where a lot of these disease processes start. Yeah, you know, you look at cancer, it's nothing more than a broken DNA bond when you really get down to the basics exactly. of it. So those telomeres, and you call them end caps, I think a good analogy, maybe you have a better one than I do, and if you do, please <laughs> say that, but I'll mention what I look at them as. You have a shoelace, and you have those little plastic caps at the end of the shoelace, and that keeps that shoelace tight so that you can thread it through the, the eyes. Right. But when that breaks down and you get these fibers, you, it's very difficult to get that through. That's an excellent analogy. So that's kind of, I think, the way we <coughs> should look at these telomeres. Right. And they degrade over time, and it's very difficult to rebuild those. Absolutely. By themselves, you really can't because people are toxic. There's nothing there that, we take antioxidants, we take vitamins and minerals and supplements, which we have to take. Uh, because we don't get them in foods. However, if the body can't process them properly, we take a lot of stuff that ends up going out the other end and it doesn't really help fix the problem. Because we're not utilizing it, we're not absorbing Correct. it, we're not utilizing it, we're not eliminating the, right. the excess toxins and so forth. So you mentioned mitochondria. What, what is mitochondria? They're, they're little, they're, they're in each cell and they are the energizers of the cell. They produce the energy that actually causes all cellular reactions, and there's over 75 trillion of these cells. How they count these is beyond me. But without this energy, without this mitochondria, it's like the battery in your phone. When the battery wears down, it doesn't work as well, or your computer slows down. So these mitochondria not only slow down in function as we age, but they slow down in numbers. So the mitochondria really is our energy, yes, our cellular absolutely. energy, and absolutely. it also becomes our physical energy. Oh, for sure. I, and regulated by hormones. Absolutely. Uh, which hormones in particular? Well, you're looking at, I mean, and interestingly enough, not only they're regulated by hormones, but they help hormones function at the right level. So it's kind of a two-edged sword. So you're looking at a actually any hormones, you're looking at all the sex hormones, all of the adrenal hormones, the thyroid hormones. I mean, every hormone in the body is there for a reason, and the brain and the rest of the body detect these subtle changes from stressors. I like to call them stressors. They can be anything, the air, the food, the just, you know, work, whatever. Person next to you. Person next to me, not in this case, though. <laughs> that's why That's why Tucker's here. That's but why I'm always so calm, because I always that's have right. my buddy here with it me. It works that really well, <laughs> and he looks bored, so anyway. But the point is, without these functioning, if you're, if a battery wears down, and how many people feel like their battery wears down at the end of the day? It's like they run out of energy before they run out of day. That's a physiological problem. Now, it can also affect mood, attitude, things like that. Sleep and so forth. Oh, absolutely, forth. sleep deprivation. But see, you can't sleep if there's some deficiency someplace. Every, and the body only heals at night, as you know. That's it, only at night. That's right, rest. and if you don't sleep through the night or you wake up constantly, you wake up exhausted in the morning and you go, oh, I gotta get out of bed. You know, we should be able to jump out of bed. I, I think that's a concept worth repeating, Gary, because people really don't realize that when we're awake and we're functioning and doing our daily activities, whatever they may, may be, including the process of taking in nutrients, eating and so right. forth, that it really taxes our system and that rebuilding part 
goes down and down and down as the day goes on, especially after we eat because our, our metabolism goes into breaking down foods for absorption of nutrients. So there's no very little repair going on during, during the day and we sleep. All that stuff that I just mentioned goes away, goes into rest and our body then begins to rebuild. So people that don't sleep properly, for whatever reason, you know, some people like to stay up late at night and think they can function on a few hours of sleep and, and go along, that beats you up. And that's one of those insults that, that's right. that causes this process of disease. I want to backstep a little bit. You had mentioned this, this breakdown and so forth. That's the inflama inflammatory response in our body. That's absolutely correct. And most people are familiar with the term oxidative stress. And what happens is, and they probably have heard of free radicals, it's because oxygen breaks down and loses an electron. I mean, we're back to physics, sorry. But what happens is, right now, research has proven there's only, there's over 200 different classified illnesses based or due to oxidative stress in the body. So whether it's an arthritic change, whether it's an inflammatory skin response, whether it's a lung condition, oxidative stress, the body's inability to balance these charges and put these molecules together properly is what leads to these illnesses. So it is a definitely a breakdown product. You're actually right. And you were talking about the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is uh, you know, our energy source, but we get those from our mother. Every male, every female gets their mitochondria from their mother. It's mito or mito right. is, is Latin for mother. And if our mom was under stress when we were in gestation and being born or had a thyroid issue or adrenal gland issue, or a dietary issue, we start off with a little bit of a deficit. We do, and it's not only the physical component of it, but it's the emotional component of it. So if they're in stressful situations, the body picks that up. Uh, the baby picks that up. They've measured that for years. They've been able to watch babies respond to negative stimuli versus positive stimuli. So you're right, if it's coming across the placenta, the blood-brain barrier, these poor little infants are already starting out with a negative. And so it's, it's a big concern. And one of the things I think that's the biggest problem is sugar. And I'm gonna use myself for example. And I don't know if you guys can tune into this or not, but I went on a, on a couple of days of a chocolate binge. I just felt the need because I wasn't consuming enough carbs to, to consume some chocolate. And if I'm gonna consume carbs, it's gonna be in the form of chocolate or ice cream. Of course. So I didn't wanna, I, didn't wanna, I can give up uh, chocolate far faster than I can give up ice cream, so I didn't want to get into the ice cream <laughs> habit. So I, I went and got some chocolate and uh, did that for a couple days, and I had a breakout over here. And that goes back to exactly what you're talking about. Right. So I created this issue and threw the hormones off because of high insulin and, and this, this sugar component that I was insulting my body with. And of course, our skin is a big detoxer, and I had a breakout. People don't realize skin's yeah. the largest organ in the body. And why did that break out? Because your body wants to get rid of that stuff. It wants to get rid of it. Absolutely. And I, I inundated my body with too much carbs in a very short amount of time. Right, and there are good carbs and bad, and those are bad carbs. They no. taste great, that's the problem. Oh, no, I enjoyed eating it. <laughs> you know, exactly but, right. But it, it, it did show its effects, like, right away. And, and, and so the things that we do on a daily basis can truly impact what, how our body functions. And then the repair from that takes a bit longer. As we age, that repair constantly takes longer, which is why we deteriorate. If you look at somebody that's 15, 16, 18, 20 years of age, look at the energy they have. I mean, they go, whether it's athletics, whether it's whatever, they, can, they, they heal faster. Look at a seven-year-old, they get hurt, they heal immediately. You get somebody in their 50s, 60s, 70s on up, why is it we heal slower? Because we're losing the ability in numbers of mitochondria, therefore we lose the ability to produce redox cells or molecules, and so everything else in the body follows that. So it's like an assembly line, if you will, but if the parts are bad, whatever you end up with doesn't function as well as it should. And then when you throw off the hormones, which are messengers, right. the cells don't even know what to do. They don't know how to respond or react. Right, so people go into this almost, a, it's almost, I call it a suspended animation. Their body goes into this, what do I do? But because it's not doing what it's supposed to, which is functioning at 100% and making, I mean, you talk about the signals that go on in our body. I mean, look at everything that these bodies do. I, you know, you think when your computer system on your car just screws up or something like that, or your hard drive slows down. That's what I talk about too. It's like your own hard drive slows down. 
something short circuiting and the energy flow is decreasing. You ever have one of those days where it's like you're trying to pull up one of those files and you just can't get mm -hmm. to it? It's the same thing. And so looking at technology today, looking at what we can do on a natural basis to not only prevent the degradation of this stuff, but actually repair it and bring it back up to a level, it allows the body to heal itself. Because I mean, really, he's talking about healing in which you mentioned it. If you cut yourself, you put the Band-Aid on the cut, it's to keep you from getting blood all over you. Does the Band-Aid heal the cut? Heck no. Nor does any antibiotic Anything. topical that you put right. on there. That's right. Fact, so sometimes the, I think they, they impair the healing A lot of process. times they do, right? Yeah. Right. You know, I had, uh, and we've talked about this, I, I had surgery last year, and uh, after the chemicals that were put in my body for the anesthesia and all of that, no, I needed the surgery, you know, so you're, sure. you're going you're gonna to do that. But I had memory loss, short-term memory loss, for I, I bet a month. You would give me a telephone number, and then I'd go like, okay, uh, what was that again? Right. And, and I, I couldn't look at a telephone number and go, 412, whatever, and put that in my phone. I'd have to do it in spurts. Or I'd walk into a room and I'd go, what the heck did I come in here for? Now, that's not me. Right. But those chemicals in my body, which did a major insult to all those functions that you were talking about, the mitochondria, the hormones, everything, messed me up. And, you know, they crossed that blood-brain barrier. And it took a while for me to get that out of there because sometimes that can stay a six six months to a year in your system. Absolutely. And of and course, I went on my program to get that out of there. Right. But, and you know, they're stored in fat cells, and, and, and then they, as you even r lose weight, they'll release those chemicals again. Because that's what fat does in our body, doesn't it? It stores toxic, yeah. right. And what people don't understand, even if you're not fat, uh, quote unquote, you have a lot of fat around your vital organs. For protection. And for protection of the organs. It's like a shock absorbing system. So general anesthesia, it's funny you said that because I had major surgery a year ago coming up this June and it was the same thing. That's the only time I've ever had, I had four hours of general anesthesia. It was like, I was tired and couldn't function. I mean, I go 12, 14 hours a day, it's not a problem, but it was like, oh my God, I need to take a nap. Well. As this, it finally hit me, and you think I would know this after 40 years in the healthcare business, but it finally hit me that, my God, I'm still dumping this stuff out of my system, which is one of the reasons why I started supplementing the redox, and it was amazing the changes that took place. Because one of the things these, these new redox molecules do, they literally break down the fat cells and they break down the, to the fatty acids so you can get rid of it faster. I actually had... It's, it's weird talking about yourself on public Isn't TV. Isn't it though? I know. But um, I've been doing it for years, so I'm used to it. I actually had a, a delayed asthma condition from the anesthesia four months later. Wow. And I, I had purposely put on some weight and then I didn't like it, so I purposely got rid of it. And it was after that, that um, anesthesia. And I think what was happening is I was releasing those chemicals from that, that were stored in my, my belly fat mostly. Yep and they were impacting my lungs. And so I had, for about a two week period of time, a asthma type condition. I wasn't sick, I didn't have congestion, I, it wasn't anything like that, it was this asthma response to the anesthesia. That's how, how severe these chemicals can impact us. Oh, it's terrible. So you were talking about this electron transfer. That's a difficult concept. To, Absolutely. Even for people in medicine to understand. Can you give us a simplified form so that our audience can, can understand what we're talking about when we talk about negative and positive electrons in our body? Right, it's just like anything else. It's like two poles on a battery. You've got a positive side and a negative side, right? And as long as that's balanced, everything works. And each cell in your body, every time a cell changes across the membrane, which is like, it, it, it's really a covering around it, but things go through it like singles, ions, things like that. Mm -hmm. it, it transfers back and forth between the fluid. And that's supposed to say balanced. So, so, so you have basically a north pole and a south yes. pole and a cell. Right, you really do. And the trouble with the cell though is, because it's circular and it's spherical, it's coming in from every place. So if the body is deficient in these molecules because the mitochondria aren't producing what they're supposed to, there's an imbalance. And what happens is most people, like I said, have heard of free radicals, that's an oxygen with an electron missing. So there's a negative charge to that. And that charge has to be, if it's not handled, 
creates breakdown in the knees, in the body someplace, and it wears out. And so people take antioxidant vitamins to counteract that. So when you talk about that, that electron transfer and you're losing electron, again, another hard concept because that means it's becoming positive and we don't want to become positive. We want to be slightly negative. Right. So, so it's, a, it's kind of a difficult concept because it's opposite of what we think. We think positive is good, negative is bad. But here, when you lose an electron and you become positive, you're actually at the deficit site at that point. Right. And we need to reverse that because when we go from the negative to the positive, we're going from the slightly alkaline position that we're in to an acidic position. Right. And we then have an explanation for what you're talking about, sore joints, right. muscle aches, sickness, flu. You know, we get bombarded by these bacteria and virus and fungus every, every day of our lives. Right. But why is it on a certain day we get sick? Right. It's because our immune system was taxed and we were probably at that positive side as opposed to that negative side. So how do we keep ourselves, what is alkylation and how do we keep ourselves in that, that negative ion alkalized position? Well, part of it's diet. I mean, you have to be careful about what you eat. There's acidic foods and there's, and there's alkaline foods. And what people don't understand is if you eat acidic foods, they end up coming out as a base and it's the other way around. And we take, a lot of people take supplements, which they should, because we don't eat what we should eat. And they just, I mean, most, even organic food, have you ever noticed organic foods which are grown without GMOs, without fertilizers? However, where does the water come from? Where does the air come from? It's the same stuff. And then plus it's getting, I always say go organic. Oh, you sure. are getting better nutrition. Oh, absolutely. And, and there are less chemicals, but those stuff are in the air, like you say, are in the water and they're being used on as products. Right. And yeah. all of these things affect the way these chemicals go. And, and to be honest with you, I've had, I'm 67. I've had joint pain in my knees for 15 years. I've had, because of being a chiropractor, working on my hands, I've had pain in my hand. I retired from active practice in 2006. I still treat, but it's very limited. But I've had, and I didn't even realize it. I mean, you think about it only when you go to pick up something and, oh, that hurts. Or when I walk up and down steps, I got used to it. It would ache. Literally, I mean, I would, I would take supplements, I would do what I was supposed to do. Um, I, to be honest with you, I haven't exercised much as I should after the surgery, because I really, as long as it's been, it's been taking me a while. When I finally realized what redox can do, it, it really hit me, because I took it for the anesthesia issue I was having, because I was sluggish, but I realized about a month ago, my knee pain's gone. I realized about two weeks ago, my hand pain's gone. Now why? because the body will work on whatever it can to repair the most involved area first. And when you think about 50, now I've got some arthritic joints, but the pain's not there now. So you mentioned antioxidants. Right. So oxidative state is a state of degradation. Right. So you wanna be consuming these antioxidants, good nutrition, but, but what are the components and what are these antioxidants? Well, I mean, most of them are in the vitamins. They're really, I mean, A, C, E, all of these things actually act as antioxidants. But where most people go wrong is they either don't get the balance of them and most people are dehydrated. And hydration is a big component. You're and 70 to 90% water. That's right. And if you're dehydrated, the body will sacrifice that. You know, so people think, oh, I, I can't drink too much water. I have to get up at night to go to the bathroom. Simply. You hear that all the time. But it's the opposite. Yeah. If you drink enough water during the day, you actually process these fluids. And, and what does water do? It creates, helps create this solution in the cells. So these ions, if they're imbalanced, but you don't have enough fluid, they never can balance themselves back out. And it's a circle that just keeps going down and down. When somebody's dehydrated, especially elder, elderly, and I've witnessed this in, when I was on staff at a convalescent home, they go into this fetal position, eyes back, frailing basically. All they are is dehydrated. They get rehydrated and they're functioning and eating and sitting up again. That's, it, that's how severe this can be. It is, go, I was gonna say, and, and the body will sacrifice everything to keep the vital organs working. I wanna quickly mention, because I want you to talk about this, these products, these, this redox system. Sure. But we need glutathione. Absolutely. And I've talked about this many times to make those antioxidants work. But this redox system actually, uh, I'll quickly say, re glutathione 
causes the antioxidants to work on their second and third pass because they don't work on their first pass. So all the A, the E, the C, whatever right. we're taking goes around and doesn't do much. But, and it won't do much unless there's glutathione. Glutathione is mostly made in the liver. A lot of people have liver disease. Right. But and this redox system kind of assists that. So explain us what this redox and what these, this supplement, I know you have an internal supplement redox and then you have a, a gel right. that you can use as well. Right. Let's focus on that right now. Okay, so the redox signaling molecules have, they started out, the research has been there for 25, 30 years. The problem was they could never stabilize these molecules outside of the body. They finally figured out how to do it, and interestingly enough, they used them in sterilizing dental instruments to begin with, and surgical instruments, but they never lasted more than about 15 minutes. Then they finally, after years of research, found out that they could stabilize these molecules. And it's a phenomenal system because even the, the topical version of it, you can put it on a cut and it heals immediately. That is, that's called Renew 28. And the reason it's called Renew 28 is because the skin cells renew every 28 days. Anna, can we focus on this for a minute and, and show this? So this is a gel, it's not meant to be taken internally. Right. Is it to be put on sore knees? You can put fingers? it on sore anything. Um, what you do is you normally have the, the person do it themselves, and they put it on three times in five minutes. And within five to 10 minutes, the pain is decreased. The motion's better. They've actually done, one of them, a friend of mine, who is a um, uh, doctor of physical therapy who worked for years with the Shriners Hospital in getting motion back and, and doing rehabilitation with kids that have had surgery. This, you can put, literally you can change muscle function, core muscle function. If people, like if you take and hold a bowling ball in front of you, okay? Most people, if you hand a bowling ball to them, they're gonna contract their feet, they're gonna shift back and forth, you're, you're gonna watch them. In fact, you take their shoes off, it happens. You put this on somebody's neck, on the base of their neck, okay? And then you wait five minutes, you do it again, the feet don't move, the core muscles contract. And then you have an internal Right. A, a, it's a powder that you drink? No, it's actually liquid. What it is, it's, um, ASEA makes it, it's a liquid product. It's nothing but stabilized redox molecules. Now, when you look at the bottle, it says salt water. But what happens, it goes through a different patent, patented process that actually creates these molecules and they sit there. And, and puts us in this ox antioxidative state, state right. the saline solution. That's correct. Dr. Gary, we're, we're at the end of the show. It was a quick show. I'm going to ask you to come back here in the near future to continue talking about this because this, we just kind of gave an introduction today. Right. And there's so much more detail that we're, we're going to go to. Oh. Dr. Gary Fiber, your information is up there, so if anybody needs to get a hold of you, they can. Right. And I appreciate you coming on and introducing us to this wellness really? that we're all seeking. It is, and I appreciate the time to offer, and what you're doing is a great service to the community. Thanks. I appreciate it. We, we love doing it. Thank you so much for watching, watching Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet. When you're healthy, you're happy too. We'll see you next time.